Hey, Hello. It's five o'clock. It's time for, uh, I don't know what, I'm clicking on things. It's time for Watch Me Work. We do this. I'm putting something in the chat again. The thing about my band, it's up. Uh, it's time for Watch Me Work. And we are here as we are most Mondays. I hope you enjoyed your President's Day. Um, I'm SLP Susan Laurie Parks, and we are helped to bring this to you by the public theater, love to the public theater, love to Hal Round. We started this enterprise about 14, 15 years ago um, when I started doing these classes, uh, first at a little theater and then brought it into the lobby of the public theater. And uh, we've been sitting around talking shop with people ever since, and it's a lot of fun. So uh, what we do is what we do every week. We work together for 20 minutes. And then we take questions. I take questions from you about your work and your creative process. And while we don't have the time to for you to read your work or show us your great piece of choreography that you've been working on or whatever, um, we do have plenty of time to talk shop and talk about creative process. And the folks in the new work development department say, hey, people, and you're going to tell them how to get in touch. So introduce yourselves. Hello, Hi. everyone. You want to go first, Haley? <laughs> Hey everyone, my name is Haley. I'm currently a fellow at the New Work Development with the Miranda family. So, yeah. Yes. And hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Amrita Ramanan. I'm the director of New Work Development at the Public. So happy to be with all of you in SLP. And so, after our 20 minutes, um, when we go into our uh, questions, we will ask you to raise your hand using the raise your hand function. Um, or if it's not working, for you. You can just raise your physical hand and we'll see you. And then we'll ask you to unmute and share your question with us. Fantastic. Okay. Thanks, Haley. Thanks, Amrita. And we are going to start the 20 minute timer. Here we go.
All right, all right. That means that the 20 minutes of work together has elapsed. And we are now going to take your questions about your work and your creative process. So as New Work Development folks said, if you've got a question, raise your hand in the raise your hand section or just wave your hand and we will we will uh, allow you to unmute yourselves. Yay. Welcome back some people. We saw last week and the week before that and the week before that. So we're gonna start with Crystal. Crystal, please unmute yourself. Hi. Hey, how you doing? Where are you? You're someplace pretty. <laughs> I'm in North Carolina. Oh, okay. Yeah, so which is where my play takes place. Um, so Fantastic. yeah, it's been really great. It's been really um helpful uh in in its own right. Um but it um hi. <laughs> um I I um okay. So maybe I should not have done this. Um, I'm still working on my my play that is coming along or was coming along. Um, I started doing some research mm -hmm. and I realized that the events of my, I finished the first act, but the second act, I'm halfway through, but halfway through, I was like, I don't know if this could happen uh if it's accurate enough and so um i didn't erase it but it made me wonder i i started writing a little bit more like today um like something else and it's like you know what am i doing you know um so i guess my question is like now that i have been kind of opened Pandora's box a little bit on the research part. Can I still keep going with what I had? Do I just finish it? Or do I honor some of the new knowledge and figure out how to, I guess, start over with my second act? I know this it's is the, the the million dollar question uh, that we answer for free. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, what what do you what do you want to do, Crystal? It's 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 your play, and you know more about it than any of us on this call. So, what do you want to do? What does your gut say? That's a good question. It's um I don't I I honestly don't know. I feel very torn by it because um. You know, I, I want to I, I want to just write a good story. You know, I want to just write a good play, and um, and I I I thought what I had was good, but I but I questioned if like literally if when I have to present it, if just droves of people would be like, that's not realistic, that's inaccurate, that can't happen. Um, when you think of the timeline and women and how women were treated then and all of this. So I, I literally am like, do I just literally do my discipline of imagination and just try to imagine something else and, you know, for the sake of trying to be to the sake of honoring the story of these two people. Who are actual people or are they made up people? They're made up people. Um, and when do you have to present it to somebody? In May. Do you have to? I do. Why? Uh, because I, I committed to having, huh? Yeah. They're, they're going to throw you in jail. I mean, are they going to throw you in jail? I mean, what are the consequences of, of, of just writing it and then not presenting it to these people and showing them something else? I, I don't have anything else. Remember? So write it and Write it and show it to them and 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 write a disclaimer over the top of it and just say, you know, historical accuracy will come in next draft. How about that? Uh huh. Because, you know, 
Yeah, Pandora, you open the box and now you have to deal with it and you have deadlines. And so you have to, you know, either either write it or don't. I mean, it, it's I, I, I mean, it, you know. You have to make that decision. It's your work. You have to make that decision. Um, you have to decide whether you're going to write something that's so historically accurate that you say droves of people will come out and I don't know what they'll do. They'll, they'll wag their fingers at you or they'll say, Hey, Crystal, you have to rewrite this because it's not historically accurate. I mean, you know, are you going to, you're going to, you know, it's, it's not life and death. It's just a play, right? It's just a piece of art, right? Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, important, but it's not, it's not, you have to, we have to just think of it like, Either you rewrite it, number one, there's one way. You can rewrite it. You can start over and rewrite it based on the information you have. Or you can keep writing like you have and write a disclaimer over the top. I know there are some huge historical inaccuracies in this. I have not, I I will have, I hope to rewrite it, have a chance to rewrite it in the coming months. And you you acknowledge to the committee or whoever is going to be reading it that you know that it's not what you hope. And that's what is called a second draft. Mm -hmm. Either or your choice. I mean, this is, you know, on a very, you know, low stakes level in a way, if you will, this is, you know, your right to choose. This is what it, this is what it is. So you can choose, rewrite it from the beginning or put a disclaimer on it and finish it. Okay. You know, you know, it's it's your choice. Yeah. Uh, or or you know, take it out in the backyard and burn it and run away and never write it again. I mean, there's that's a third choice. Ha. Huh. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. But you, you either either one. It's it it happens all the time. It's 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 a it's a a something, but it's it's what happens when you you do research and you find out that things bother you and then you're bothered by them and either you're bothered by them or you're not bothered by them. And if you're bothered by them, then you need to do something about it. Okay. Right. Yeah. I mean, the, the last, the, when I said a couple of weeks ago, just go ahead and write it. You were talking about accent and dialect and things like that. And you were talking about, I don't know everything and I'm just going to write it. Well, halfway through you started to know more. You know, yeah, so okay. it's okay. <laughs> you, know, uh, you know, it's just a play, right? It's yeah. just a piece of creative writing. It's just a piece of creative writing. It's, you know, hopefully, I mean, I don't know the situation, but hopefully lives are not hanging in the balance. Like, you know, right? I mean, I really hope not. And if there are, then, you know, let's let's get some professional help who who could help us with that. I'm not that person. Mm -hmm. to get professional psychological help if lives are hanging in the balance. I just want to offer that disclaimer. I'm not saying that I am that person. Okay. We're just talking about what happens when we don't know which way to go. And this has happened to you in your work more than once. So this is a pattern that you need to look at of like going full speed ahead. And then, oh my God, I put the brakes on for reasons you know, for many different reasons. So, mm. okay. You know, yeah. You know, I would, you know, I, I would finish it and write the disclaimer <laughs> and then hopefully they'll give you a chance to rewrite it. You know, if you have, if you have time to do that or hopefully you'll get a chance to rewrite it before, before the due date. Yeah. <sighs> okay. Sorry to complain. <laughs> You're not complaining. You're asking for advice, and I'm I'm sitting here giving it to you. I, it's just it's difficult not knowing all the specifics. You know, I, I haven't read the play. I don't know the specifics, and you know, unfortunately, we don't have that kind of band with in this offering to to do that kind of work. Yeah. So we're just encouraging you to continue. I just want you to continue to do your work. You know. And so I, I want you to continue. Which either way, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I can do that. Okay. okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank okay, you. Thank you. Um, next, Sharon, if you could unmute yourself. Hi. Hi, hey, everyone. Sharon. Hi, SLP. Um, hey, Sharon. Hi. 
you gave me some great advice a few weeks ago, so I'm back. Um, Oh, yay. and it's my question's a bit broad. I have a few projects that um, cause me anxiety. <laughs> my creative process has has started to cause me a lot of anxiety because the last bunch of years it's been connected to my income. And I spend a lot of time applying for grants and trying to get funding and pitching and all this stuff. And I have a few projects that are in process, but I'm a bit stuck on them. And I have this Um, the next month I have a studio space, which I haven't had in a while that I can go to and work. And it's a nice big empty room. And I'm trying to think of what I can do. You know, I'll, I'll only be spending an hour or two there in the mornings, but what can I do to have a generative play space where I'm just like, um, creating like how, how much of a frame to give myself, what the frame should be. I don't know if you have specific prompts or thoughts on how to come up with my own prompts, but how can I like Love it. Right, right. Oh, great. Well, that's uh, congratulations on getting a studio space and that you can go to um, regularly. That's a real blessing. That's really great. Um, is it going to be a, a studio space that's just yours or will other people come and go in and out of it? Just mine. And it's a nice big room. I really like to, uh, even in writing, work spatially, like have different pieces of paper out and stuff like that. So I'll have that. Yeah. Oh, well, great. Well, take, I mean, take some of your favorite things. You know, and it, and because you can put things in them in the room and leave them there. Yeah. Is that okay? Great. So take some of your favorite things and put them around the room. So when you walk in every day, it feels like, oh, this is my space, right? So um, if you, I mean, I like sticking things up on the walls. You know, even with you know not nailing anything, if it's you know, but you glue things. I mean, not glue, tape things on the walls. That's kind of fun. Pictures you like, things like that. Um, In terms of prompts, the best prompts are your mindset all through the day, starting now, which is going to be say things like, this is a really wonderful time for me to be working. You know, I really have time to focus here. I have so much fun. All those positive, affirming things you can think of. And every time, um, maybe a, a negative or an anxious thing crosses your mind, right? Just turn your mind toward the positive. I'm really worried about money. I know money's going to come. I'm just going to focus on what I love. I can do this. You know, you know, big friend or spirit is in my corner, things like that. Those are the best prompts I know. Just, And yes, go ahead, go ahead. And when you don't, when you're writing outside of a specific story or project and you're just sitting down and you're like, I'm just going to like invent, um, do you, are you doing something other than inventing? Do you, do you do that? Like, is there, is there a way that you're guiding your invention process or your, your, uh, how you're knowing what to write? Well, you said you had a couple of different projects already. Is that correct? No, I do. Yeah. So you have projects already. It's true. I guess I feel mad at them. So I'm inclined oh. to like, just start something else. Cry, cry. As my son, I'm a cry. <laughs> oh my God, that's so painful. You're <laughs> mad at projects because, because, because they're shy. Maybe they're shy. Yeah, they're shy. <laughs> oh, you're going to tell how many projects are there? Like how many projects? Uh, I'd say four. Oh, Goody. So the first day, take all, I mean, take, you know, I mean, it, it, not big trunks of stuff, but take pieces of each one of them and take them to the party and put them around the room and entertain them. Spend time with them. If you like candles and it's not a fire hazard, you know, bring a candle in there, bring some sage, you know, and, and burn some sage, put it, bring some of your favorite music, have a little like party for them. You know what I mean? Yes. Reacquaint yourself with these dear spirits that came to you, Sharon. They came to you and they said, please include me. And then they got a little shy and you got a little shy. And now you guys are talking. No, we're not. That almost yeah, so Befriend yeah. them. And then one of them, you know, at, at, during that party, you know, that mixer, if you will, will emerge as the one who really wants to be the one that you work on. 
Okay. The warmest one, the one that's most talkative. Okay. So you're going to work on her. You're going to spend all the whole time with this one. Cool. And, and positive mantras, positive self-talk, hypnotize yourself to towards success. Okay. Okay. And really, especially if we sometimes we feel anxious or worried or all that, just, you know, turn up, turn up the volume of the, the good self-talk. It really, really, really works. Okay. Also, if you write in a journal, write positive things in your journal, your prayer notebook, whatever you want to call it. Positive things. Cool. Okay. Thank you so much. Yeah. Have fun. Yeah. Bye. Yeah. Bye. Thank you, Sharon. Um, so before we move on to our next question, I'm just going to go through the queue because we have several questions, including in the chat, someone who's not able to raise their hand. So I'm just going to go through the order and then we're going to go um, from there. So next up, we have Jonathan. After that, Kimmy D, then Rocky, and then Catherine Gold. So Catherine, I saw your name in the chat. So we will go to you afterwards. Um, so Jonathan, please unmute yourself. Hey, Jonathan. I don't think I'm sorry about that. It took me a minute. So can you hear me? Okay. Hi, you're good. Hi. So um, I was so interested to hear Crystal say I'm I'm in North Carolina where my play is set um, because my question is about setting um, and how important do you think it is? How and and how much world building you know as playwrights. Do we are we on the hook for you know because like in 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 other art forms like film and and novels and places like that like there's a lot of world building that goes on but then if you look at um you know like like Shakespeare he'll just have a character say you know this is the forest of Arden and like he's done like that's it here we are we're in the forest of Arden and then we just go um because I have a a bunch of my plays were set have been set in New York City where I lived for a long time and that was sort of effortless and then I have a new one though that's set not in New York City and I think it is important to the play but I don't know how well that sense of place is being brought forward you know and I don't know like should I be trying to do it in stage directions right like writing out long descriptions because I think a lot of times uh, other partners may not directors or, or um, you know other creative partners may not be into my stage directions or my, my <laughs> of the scene, right? So how how do you think about that? And how important is that? And what what kinds of, where is it um, that we have those opportunities to do like that kind of world building? That's a great, great question, Jonathan. And you're right, Shakespeare's here we are in the forest of Arden and that's enough, you know? Um, or the whole thing with Lear and the, they were on the promontory and they, he fell, all, all Brilliant, brilliant theatrical stories are being told um, with not a lot of stage directions. Um, I would say make it real for the character. Like you don't need a big honker of a stage direction to make it real for a director, I don't feel. Yeah. Um, and oftentimes directors don't like reading them anyway. I know. Um, but I do feel that you need to make it real for the character. For example, if it's um uh if they're sitting on a front porch and there's a neighbor lady across the street who is watching them as they talk you know uh that needs to be real for the characters do you understand what i'm saying so we don't need a big stage direction they sit on the front porch it's a screened in porch blah 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 blah. but yeah. if the if there's a neighbor lady across the street watching them that needs to be real for the people who we are watching in the play I always tell tell people, paint the room, furnish the room, even the room that you don't see. So if it's a if it's a play that takes place in a house and you never go into the basement, the characters should need to know what the basement looks like. Mm -hmm. You know, you see, or the front yard. Yeah. Because when they look out the window, what are they seeing? You know what I mean? When they look out the front window, what are they seeing? When they look out the back window, what are they looking at? You, you see what I'm saying? So, so it needs to be in the mind of the character. 
Um, and then it will be in the in the play. It will be in the writing of the play, which is much better than putting it in the stage direction. And Shakespeare did that a lot. He would put it in the line, mm -hmm. the action and the state, the description, if necessary, in a line like here we are in the forest of Arden. Right. You know, they, it, it, he didn't say the forest of Arden, lots of trees. The character right. says, here we are in the forest of Arden, which is great because you can't set it anywhere else. Ha <laughs> ha. He's got you. He's a great control freak. We love him. That's is great. that helpful? Yeah. yeah, that's helpful. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. Great question, man. Thank you. Thank you, Jonathan. All right. Kimmy D, if you could unmute yourself. Hey, Kimmy, how you doing? Hi, SLP. Hi, everybody. Thank you for being here again. Um, I don't know if this is a dumb question because maybe it's just obvious to most people, but could you please explain to me what new development uh, at, at HowlRound or the public is? I don't know what that means. Oh, new development. Go ahead, folks. <laughs> sure. Uh, so new work development. It's a department of the public theater. We currently have... Um, five of us, including Haley. And we uh, we support the development of all plays and musicals at the public. So that looks like everything from um, supporting writers with readings and workshops of their new plays, uh, providing dramaturgical support, um, both in those developments as well as for main stage productions. Uh, we we have commissions uh, that we hire writers for to you know write about what they want and we support that. Um, we have writers residencies, which SLP is a part of one of our residencies, and we support writers all over multiple years. Um, so so yeah, so that's uh that's our department. So how do you get involved in something like that? You um right now, you know, I will say uh, we currently have programs where we are supporting many writers, artists in duration. So we we don't have any invite openings right now for our programs. The the only one that we do have right now that is a open invitation is the Emerging Writers Group, which that information is on our website for application. Um, but when we do, you know, I'd say check our website. We do have a great development page, and we'll share updates with you. Okay, thank you. Thanks, SLP. Sure. Yeah, Love the writer so group is such such a wonderful group of writers, and and uh, you know they they learn a lot from being in the group in the cohort, and uh, really fabulous writers. Thank you so much. And I've I've applied to three schools for playwriting, and I'm just I mean I'm doing what you told me to do. I'm trying to hypnotize myself, and every time I get nervous, I say something positive. But there's there's that, but you're 62 and it might not happen. <laughs> and so I'm still looking for other avenues because I don't want to give up even if I can't get into school. Great. Well, you, you, if, yeah, if you go to school, you're going to be in great company. And if you don't go to school, you'll be in the company of those of us who did not. So Thank when, you. You, know, you can win both ways. Thank you so much. Thanks. God, I love you. Okay. Thanks. <laughs> Thank you, Kimmy. Thank you, Kemi. Um, Rocky, please unmute yourself. Okay, hey. Um, hey thanks, thanks for the advice last time. Um, I got that film in a good place, so thank you for that. Oh, oh great. Congratulations. Good for you. <laughs> um, okay, so this is kind of like a totally different type, type of question. I'm going to a gala this week, and I'm wondering your advice on chill networking, particularly in a post-pandemic world, because like, I I wear a lot of hats. I'm like a freelance designer, so I'm like always seeking new work, but also I'm trying to like subtly promote this new documentary as well to a bunch of people I don't know, and I'm also flying solo to the event. Hmm. Um, so I don't know, and I don't know anyone there. Um, so I'm just wondering if you have any advice on just like chill networking. Oh, I, oh, galas can be a lot of fun. Is it a sit down gala or is it like a, is it a, what, what kind of, is it like a cocktail and then an event? What is it? I don't know. Um, that's a good question. 
the, well, I just got this invite. So you got this invite. Ben, oh, it's and it's wonderful to be invited, you know. So yeah. it's always fun to go put on a fabulous outfit, right? Something that makes you feel good, that you feel really good in. That's the most important thing, right? Because you want to like look in the mirror and feel like, yeah, this is me. And go there and talk to talk to people. People, in my experience, people love to talk about their work so you can always ask people what they're up to and that gives them them an opportunity to be heard and oftentimes when people are heard then they can reciprocate in kind okay. and, and wear something that you feel really handsome in you know really lovely in and then you'll have a wonderful time make sure your phone is charged. I will. make sure your phone is charged okay Make sure you got plenty of juice. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, Rocky. Okay, next is going to be Catherine Gold. You could unmute yourself whenever you're ready. Yes, and Catherine, I know you had some trouble with the raise hand function, so we'll also try to find you. Oh. Are you with us? Oh, there you are. You are. We see oh, you. Okay, great. Oh, there we go. But she's not, she's still muted. Yeah, we've asked to unmute Catherine. So are you able to unmute now? She can't. Huh. Okay, we're clicking the ask to unmute. Okay. I think you got I it. Great. Yay. 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 Oh, I'm, <laughs> I'm not even turn my light on for that. That's amazing. There. Hello, everyone. Hello, SLP. It's lovely hey. to be here. Another great session. Um, so I'm going to ask a little bit of a different question. As one of our dear and revered playwrights, I'm curious to know what's your process in working with a director. So um, what historically has worked for you? What are your expectations? um you know what in your view are best practice of best practices of writer director collaboration right Ooh, catherine that's <laughs> a big question and um i would uh i would answer in the watch me work fashion in this show uh -huh. we make it about you okay so i'm going to ask you are you about to start working with a director. I am a director. You are a director, yeah. okay. And are you working I, with a writer? Yes, I I work with writers all the time and some of them are, some of them just totally leave it to director's discretion. And um, the problem with that is that I'm not getting much feedback from the person who conceived this work of art. Hmm. Um, our personal style as a director is that I go by the letter of what the playwright wrote because mm -hmm. I think they wrote it for a reason. It came mm -hmm. to them for a reason. Mm -hmm. um, I try to stay as loyal to the actual text as possible. I, I am that person who constantly dings people if they miss the lines or if they uh -huh. rewrite the play right uh, as a director I am very very interested in your input as to writer director collaboration and what has worked for you what do you like yeah well uh I would <laughs> say that different writers like different things and yeah. because I like something doesn't mean that other writers might like it. Some writers like directors to take the lead. Some writers are not as visual as other writers. Mm -hmm. you know? um, so I appreciate that you're saying that you really follow the letter of the play because I yes, we, when we write stuff down on paper, we usually mean for, even if it's the, the, the long stage directions that Jonathan is contemplating, you know, we, we'd like them to be read and we write them for a reason. Um, not that they have to be adhered to exactly, but at least um, a director might offer a, a question like, do you want this to be adhered to exactly? You know, so it's the beginning of a conversation, the stage directions. 
and the lines are also a beginning of it's a beginning of a conversation. Um, and if hopefully your writers are present, you know, uh, if, if they're new plays, especially, it's great to have the writer in the room. Um, if they're classics, then then you know, and and the writer is long passed away, then you have a lot more leeway and freedom about what you might do. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah, I like a director. Uh, just in short, I like a director who is willing to listen, willing to listen. But then I like that in all people. <laughs> oh yeah, that's that. I you know, willing to listen, someone who pays attention. I like that in all people. Uh, the golden rule, gold. Hey, your name is gold. You know, do unto others. You know, give yeah. someone who who gives as they would like to be given to. Yes. Respect. Uh, what I'm learning a lot from a director I'm working with right now, St- Steve H. Broadnax, the third SHB three. We call him. Uh, respect. Who reminds us that respect is literally means to look again. Um, and I would add to respect rehearsal, which means to rehear. So someone who's willing to listen, someone who's willing to look, someone who pays attention, someone who has fun. (laughs) I love directors who know how to have a good time, you know, especially when the work is, 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 you know, a lot, a director who can, who can bring levity and joy into the room, even when it's, 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 you know, material that's challenging, whether formally or subject matter or whatever. That's a real gift, real, real gift. Sounds like you're a wonderful director, Catherine. <laughs> I appreciate you saying that. Um, I, I think it's my responsibility as a director to create a safe environment mm-hmm. where the actors feel safe in taking risks, exploring and just playing until it, it's formed, you know, playing, playing, practicing, practicing. Um, I remember um, I took this scene study class with Lyle Kessler mm-hmm. and he always told us it's called play for a reason. Just fa- have fun, play, have fun. Right. <laughs> exactly, exactly, exactly. Yeah, and that's another thing I do, like in the gaps that I have in my directing, I go and take a scene study class or do Meisner training, do something to ground myself in the craft of acting, because I I, I think that makes a better director out of me to know the craft of acting. <laughs> Definitely. Wow. Sounds great. Thank you for your question, Catherine. Thank you for taking my question. Thank you. Great. Are there any other questions from anyone in the room? And then I know SLP, we want to hold the final few minutes for our announcement for next week. We do, we do. Um, Okay, we're just going to, we'll just slide into that. Now we have um, the Watch Me Work suggestion of the week, the suggestion for your digestion is just to realize that, um, yeah, creativity is a form of Mm self-care. So when we allow ourselves to do our work, which is why I'm encouraging you to do your work, because it's not like it's, and, and find ways to continue to do your work. And a lot of times, whether it's I don't have all the historical facts right or I don't have a a workspace that's perfect or my kid likes to come in here and talk to me. My kid likes to come here and talk to me while I'm writing or whatever. Um, Conditions don't have to be perfect, but I constantly encourage you to get your work done and to give yourself affirmations, positive affirmations so that you can get your work done. Because creativity, allowing yourself to engage in the creative act is a form of self-care. And there are lots of forms of self-care out there. This is just one of them, but this is kind of a great one and it's kind of free. So um, yay, yay. Anyway, so that's the suggestion for your digestion for this week and our announcement. So we promised last year that we'd have some special guests and we've got a whole bunch of people who want to be our special guests on the show. And so we have our first special guest of 2024 coming. When, Amrita, on the 4th of March? On the 4th of March on next week. March. And, it's, and it's, oh my God, it's it's out of the box, out of this world. It's Neil deGrasse Tyson. So Neil deGrasse Tyson's 
a brilliant mind, brilliant scientist, and also a brilliant writer and a brilliant creative soul. And he's going to be with us on Watch Me Work, talking about creativity, talking about his work, but also talking about the creative process and all those good things. And we're just thrilled New Work Development uh, has organized his, his, his participation with us. So we're just really, really happy uh, that he'll be on next week. Anything else, Amrita, that I, I'm forgetting? To, to, to uh, I'm not forgetting. I just thank you, SLP, and just also want to amplify. Um, please continue to spread the word and come back and see us on Watch Me Work. It's been so wonderful to start the year off with such a robust group that keeps on growing and multiplying. We love that. So please come back. Please spread the word. And we're thrilled to see you yeah. next week. Yeah, and even if you don't have any specific questions for Neil deGrasse Tyson, if you just want to work in his presence, which I I know I do. I just want to vibe with him as he's working. I want to be working. And, it, you know, his courage is contagious. His brilliance is contagious. And I want to catch some of it. He said the other day, like, we are actually stardust. We are actually stardust. And I'm like, yes, we are stardust. So it's not just lyrics in a Joni Mitchell song. It's true. So come on to watch me work. Tell your friends. Tell your enemies. Tell your neighbors. <laughs> all your flavor. <laughs> We're going to be doing it next week with Neil. So come on down. Okay. And yeah, it's like practically six o'clock. Yeah. Look at us. Look at us with that time. Thank you all. Thank you for the last watch me work of February for being with us. And right. we'll see you again soon.